Hello, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast, we'll be comparing and contrasting cardiac muscle with smooth muscle tissue. Okay, let's explore the similarities and differences between cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle. Cardiac muscle is found only in the wall of the heart and is surrounded by a variety of other tissues and organs, including connective tissues, nerves, the heart's own conduction system, including the pacemaker, and blood vessels. The structure of the sarcomeres, including the A-band, H-zone, etc., and the organization of their proteins is the same in both skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle fibers. Both are striated muscle tissue. The major difference is the presence of intercalated discs found in between the cardiac muscle fibers. These are thick cellular junctions that are visible under the microscope as seen here in this photograph. And their job is to connect the cardiac muscle fibers end to end. They consist of desmosomes that provide the connecting strength of the disc and gap junctions, which include pores that allow the cardiac muscle action potentials to propagate from one fiber through to the next. Cardiac muscle fibers contain more mitochondria than the skeletal muscle tissue, indicating a strong need for aerobic cellular respiration in order to produce enough ATP to power their contraction. The fibers are also branched and have a single large nucleus within each fiber. Physiologically, cardiac muscle has a longer contraction cycle compared to skeletal muscle, it can stay contracted for up to 15 times longer than skeletal muscle. This is because calcium ions are released into the sarcoplasm for longer amounts of time from both the sarcoplasmic reticulum, shown in the diagram in yellow, and the interstitial fluid outside of the fiber. A big difference between the two is that cardiac muscle is involuntary which means it can contract through its own autorhythmic fibers, unlike skeletal muscle, which is primarily voluntary and only contracts in response to the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. At rest, cardiac muscle contracts every 0.85 seconds, averaging around 75 times per minute. Now let's take a closer look at smooth muscle tissue. Smooth muscle tissue is similar to cardiac muscle tissue in that it's mostly involuntary and autorhythmic. There are two types of smooth muscle tissue. Visceral or single unit smooth muscle tissue and multi-unit smooth muscle tissue. Visceral smooth muscle tissue is the most common and is located in the skin, blood vessels, and hollow organs like the organs of the GI tract, including the stomach and intestines, and the urinary bladder. The smooth muscle fibers are attached to each other in an end-to-end -end arrangement and contain gap junctions to allow propagation of the muscle action potentials. There is one motor neuron that forms neuromuscular junctions with a small group of visceral smooth muscle fibers. This arrangement causes all of the fibers to work together as a single unit and contract or relax together. Multi-unit smooth muscle tissue is the other type of smooth muscle tissue and is made of separate muscle fibers with each connected to its own motor neuron terminals. In contrast to visceral smooth muscle fibers, there are no gap junctions. So when the action potential reaches the fiber, it triggers the contraction of only that one fiber and is working independently of the other fibers nearby. Multi-unit smooth muscle tissue is found inside the walls of large arteries, in the lungs larger airways, the erector pili muscles of the hair follicles, and the small muscles of the eye that help focus the lens and adjust the diameter of the pupil. Smooth muscle tissue is different from both skeletal and cardiac muscle in that it is non-striated. It has a tapered shape with the ends coming to points with a thicker middle portion containing a single nucleus. 
It lacks the sarcomere arrangement of the other muscle types, but it does contain both thick and thin filaments. It also contains intermediate protein filaments and dense bodies that are spread out through the sarcoplasm as well as attached to the muscle sarcolemma. The dense bodies work in a way similar to the Z-discs in striated muscle and serve as attachment points for the thin filaments. The intermediate filaments also connect to the dense bodies and help distribute tension during contraction, pulling on the dense bodies and shortening the muscle fiber in a twisting corkscrew-like fashion. Like cardiac muscle, smooth muscle also has a longer contraction and relaxation cycle because it takes a longer time for the calcium ions to reach the filaments and then exit the fibers after contraction. Smooth muscle also displays a greater ability to stretch and shorten compared to the other muscle tissues and still be able to contract in these different states. A phenomenon called the stress relaxation response is observed in smooth muscle, which is where the smooth muscle fibers upon being stretched first contract and generate tension, then after a minute begin to relax. This feature helps the smooth muscle in the walls of hollow organs maintain a stable pressure on their contents. Smooth muscle fibers don't have much sarcoplasmic reticulum and lack the T or transverse tubules in their sarcolemma. Instead, they contain small pouched infoldings of membrane called cavioli that store calcium ions. Calcium ions stay in the sarcoplasm for longer periods of time and generate smooth muscle tone, which keeps the fiber partially contracted over time. This is a useful feature in the walls of organs of the GI tract, where the walls can keep a steady pressure on the digestive contents inside, helping them move along through the system. This muscle tone is also helpful in blood vessels, such as the arterioles, where the sustained pressure can be used to stabilize blood pressure.